Hello everyone, Steen at Oyster Grow, and we're just gonna give you a quick overview on what's in the hybrid shift system, the components, and how to put it together. So first off, um, what's in and part of the kit. So, uh, starting at the top here, we've got two floats. So the actual cage we're gonna be putting together is the ProFlow six bag system. So ProFlow, uh, slightly smaller of the two six bag options because you've got ProFlow or high flow. So ProFlow, um, two floats with the caps and the O-rings and seals and what have you are in the caps already. So uh, they're basically ready to go. Uh, next major component that you can see here is a shelf. The shelf divides the bag and actually is part of the integral structure of the cage itself. So the shelf, then you have the top section of the cage. So the cage is basically like a clamshell um, put in two halves. So you have a top and a bottom. The top is where the floats attached to. The bottom of the cage, um, that's basically the underside and that has uh, three, three different bends in different directions um, that basically retains the bags as well. So that's the three major, major components. Then the slightly smaller components, uh, we have um, four injection molded um, high strength polymer dividers. Uh, they're manufactured uh, right here on site. Um, so that's those four. Then to close up the cage, uh, once your bags are in it, uh, three gaiters. So um, they're ready to go and uh, be tied on. Um, we have four sets of bolts. So that's how you'll see them as they go into the assembly. But what you've actually got here is um, basically a stainless steel bolt, a stainless steel nylock nut, and two stainless steel washers. And then these two components basically go uh, over the bolt and between the uh, aluminum of the cage and basically they're washers and they're isolators. So even though we're using stainless steel and stainless steel uh, to aluminum has a slightly reduced um, galvanic effect, um, over the time there could be uh, some potential for corrosion. So rather than taking that risk and obviously uh, having an impact in the potential longevity of the product, uh, we have these components that are manufactured here, injection molded, um, and they are isolator components. So they basically, as you can see here on one of the assemblies, they go um, over the nuts and bolts and keep all the surfaces entirely separate from the aluminum. So no worries about uh, corrosion whatsoever. Then last but not least, the four strands. So the strands basically go over the floats and then hook through and get um, uh, bent in place to uh, hold the floats and lock them in to the actual cage itself. Tools you're going to be using uh, an impact with a 7 16 socket and then a wrench with a 7 16 socket and that's basically all you need to uh, be able to use. Uh, on top of that uh, there is a uh, specialist bar for bending the strands um, actually on the cage, uh, which we provide. So you don't have to worry about finding or sourcing something like that. It's actually something that we manufacture. So that's the kit. Now what we're gonna do is put it together and show you an assembly. So with us are Carl and Lewis, and Carl and Lewis are gonna be showing you how to put this thing together. There we go. So the bottom of the cage is on the table currently and they're overlaying the top of the cage. One of the things to pay attention to, there is an interlock bar on each end on the center line. So that makes sure everything lines up nicely. Then what's happening, we are gonna be putting in the dividers. The dividers slide in and then pull back into the interlock. So they're locked in place. Nice and easy, easy. So there's no tools on for them. So we just push in place and slide in, and that's now locked in place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pass the shelf through. So the th shelf is going from one end to the other, and actually sliding through the dividers as it's coming along. So as you can see, basically just lining up, sliding it through, and that all comes all the way through the end. And then 
tile is going to come around this side. You open up the end of the cage, pull that over the peg, and again, that peg's there, and everything's locked in place and lined up. So, obviously, uh, they slide back into position, but what stops them from sliding forwards again is they're locked in position by the shelf. So those dividers cannot go anywhere. Next up is the bolts. So the bolts, nice and easily, just slide in place. Uh, Carl's already got the long sleeve, so the long uh, isolator goes on the um, bolt side. And then on the underside uh, will be um, the small isolator, um, a stainless steel washer, and the nylon nut. So we'll show you that in more detail. So coming on to the end here, basically, that pushes through like so. You can see it on the underside there. Now the isolator is going in place, and that means the bolt, bolt cannot make any contact whatsoever. The washer then goes to the isolator, and then the nut just screws on in place. So really quite simple. So while we've been talking about that, all four bolts are put in place. Check alignment, make sure everything's good. Wrench on the bottom, zip it up. You don't have to over tighten them. Make sure it's nice and snug. The nylon will do its job. And being that it's stainless on stainless, they tend to work really well anyway. So that's your cage basically already built. Didn't take too long. Now the floats are going on in place. You'll notice that there's diamonds on the floats. You always put the male diamond, so the pronounced diamond on the inside, but you'll also notice that the floats themselves have a groove on the underside and that groove actually sits over that shaft. So let me show you that again. Groove on the underside that actually sits on there as a saddle. So that locks everything in place, makes sure nothing can move. So now the strands, they get put in place. So the first thing that happens, you just manually slide them over the float like Carl's doing there, and then pop them into the sockets. So they're ready to be levered in place. And as you can see, that's now down. It's already pre-bent. Uh, not bent so much that it's hard to put them in, but bent enough to basically get everything aligned for you and make it as easy for you to do as possible. So the strands are on that end, strands on this end, and the strands are already on both sides of the cage. No problem with that, nice and easy. Now we're gonna take this tool. That little socket slides over the strand, end of the strand, and basically we're now gonna lever in place and you'll notice that we stopped at this point on the diamond and when you stop there you've got more than enough bend to retain it so we're doing that on each side of the float um, so this strand on this end is done as you can see it's done on the inside on the outside so loose is doing the same the other end So this float is locked in place. Now we're going onto the float on the back. Again, just bending it over and you have the visual cue of the diamond. Once you line up with the bottom edge or edge of the diamond, uh, you have gone far enough with bending the strand. You don't want to over bend it and put too much stress in it. Uh, so that's more than enough. That float is not going anywhere once that's done. So that's that end done and then Move it over to this end. So again, outside done, inside. And we found the best technique is working outside to inside. So now all the floats are locked in place. 
all you're doing now is going to attach your gaiters. So the gaiter, you take the clip, uh, pinch it on there, the clip is in the middle of the knot, pull it tight, lock it in place, that gate is in there. Same again on the middle, that gate is in there. And that is a fully assembled ProFlow hybrid, hybrid shift cage. So pretty straightforward. Um, we've designed it to be uh, nice and easy, straightforward. And again, using minimal tools. Uh, and as you can see, um, this is now ready to go in the water. Any questions, let us know. And uh, hope you find this informative. Cheers.